Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this we're going to the video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with Vega 20. Specifically, the Vega 20 will indeed be supporting XGMI, as well as PCIe 4.0. And this comes to us via a series of Linux patches. And this information has been exposed thanks to a series of Linux driver updates from AMD, which have been spotted by the website forenix.com. So first of all, PCIe 4.0, of course, drastically increases the bandwidth available for the car to communicate with the rest of the system, which in servers and high performance computing is, of course, an incredibly important thing. This is combined with ExaGMI. The too long didn't read about this is it's almost like a continuation of AMD's own Infinity Fabric. Both of these things will combine together and will be a rough approximation or at least some competition with NVIDIA's NVLink, which of course is a proprietary solution that NVIDIA have put together and allows the GPUs to talk to one another at very high speeds. I believe it's around 300 gigabytes per second, which is very fast and way faster than what we have with, let's say, PCIe 3.0. Other rumors and other information regarding the exact specifications are somewhat thin on the ground. We know, of course, it's got HBM2. We know it has support for deep learning instructions and a whole bunch of other stuff. But exactly what the performance of these cards are remains a mystery. In fact, just a short while ago, I did put out a video concerning the performance of these GPUs and the fact that it's supposedly over 20 T-flops of FP32, also known as full precision. But to do that, the GPUs would either need to have incredible uh, clock speed or they will have to have a larger number of uh, NCUs than what we see in current Vega, unless, of course, those rumors are also counting other parts of the GPU, perhaps specific er uh, specific uh, add-ons which will be used for deep learning. Either way, it's going to be fascinating to see how AMD will be competing with NVIDIA, with, of course, the Quadro series and the uh, other GPUs that it's got in its inventory and see how AMD compare, not only, of course, in performance, but also pricing. Also, I want to put out a small update to the story we put out yesterday, which concerns, of course, the Athlons and the second generation of Ryzen Pros. AMD have officially announced these processors. And here's the thing. The Athlons are, yes, two uh, physical cores, four threads, but retail, yes, at 55 US dollars. Now, I'm not going to BS you and say that this is a perfect processor for gaming, but I imagine this will be a very tantalizing CPU for certain usage scenarios, for example, streaming and light uh, editing and that type of thing. It could be rather interesting, though, exactly what we can get out of these processors, and perhaps it will be something that you guys would like us to test. Let us know. And here's another rumor that's doing the rounds at the moment with Camp AMD. And this one is to do with X499. So, of course, this would be the successor to X399 and the small refresh that we had. And this comes to us from our website, HD Technologica. Now, details exactly what we will see with this chipset remain a mystery. I'll get into that in just a second. But there are rumors that we could be seeing this unveiled at CES 2019. So what could we be seeing uh, AMD bring to the table? Well, one thing possibly would be additional PCIe bandwidth. The question is, will we see major improvements in memory bandwidth? For example, what we do know about uh, the X399 and the current generation of Threadrippers, generation two, is that it only supports quad channel memory. Of course, memory controllers now are located on the chips themselves. And I highly doubt it's, I guess, technically possible, but I highly doubt that AMD would allow the chip to function in more than high, in more than quad channel memory, because not only would it require a lot of work from AMD's part to actually do that, to have the chip, uh, the memory controller support both modes of operation. And of course, it would most likely mean that the motherboard itself would need quite a lot of work compared to its old predecessor, although it's possible. But there's actually a really simple reason for them not doing this, and that's, well, the fact that if you are running an application which requires a lot of I.O. or a lot of uh, read and writes for memory, <laughs> there's a very good chance that you're a candidate 
who would want to purchase Epic. So for AMD to then say, well, you know, let's just give you this option instead when it's considerably cheaper, it would essentially say to a lot of people, well, we're just going to hamstring the sales of Epic. And I'm not saying that AMD necessarily wouldn't do that, but I don't feel they would do that. Then again, they also have the next generation of Epic processors coming out early next year. Uh, we know, of course, that's going to be built on Zen 2. So you could make, I guess, a counter argument that if you are in the data center market, you could get a faster processor, but then those processors will eventually come to the consumer lineup. So I just don't think AMD would do that. So what changes we're going to be seeing with X499, whether it's legit or not, it could be uh, beefed up overclocking ability, it could be perhaps changes to the I.O., it could be other changes as well to the general board itself, as I mentioned, uh, faster PCI Express connectivity. Those type of things would certainly make a lot of sense. I don't think that we're going to see the jump from quad-channel memory to, let's say, Octo. And now a small update concerning the GeForce RTX series of cards, and this comes to us through Micron, and they have announced that they are the launch partner with NVIDIA for the RTX 20 series of GPUs. Of course, we knew that they were producing GDDR6 memory back last year. A lot of details had leaked early anyway before the initial press statements, but here we are with a couple of slides from the company. They provide various calculations of memory bus width versus the actual clock speed. It's rather a nice slide, actually. I've got to give them credit for that. Uh, it's rather easy to understand, and you can quite cl clearly see that, yes, faster memory buses and the calculation at 14 GPPS, which is the speed to initial shipments of GDDR6 are going to be put out. What type of uh, memory bandwidth you're going to be having with that particular GPU? And I have to say that I really, really, really like the way that I've done that slide. Uh, also, furthermore, we see that... <laughs> GDDR6 is rocking the memory plane. Micron is mass producing density of 8 GB with performance to spare. Ecosystem for GDDR6 design is enabled now with capitalization for high performance application beyond graphics. And experience delivers proven performance for risk adverse engineers. I really like that part, risk adverse engineers. I think that's kind of a dig, to be honest, towards uh, HBM. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm misreading that. But either way, yes, of course, this memory will not just find a usage in producing game content, so graphics. It will, of course, be utilized for many different things and compute-based scenarios, so it's pretty darn cool. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the relatively shorter video today because I have a lot of editing to do, but I did want to discuss this, particularly with the Vega 20 situation. But anyway, with all of that said, take care of yourselves and bye for now.